To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Remain standing and let's turn to number 395 and sing Take Time to Be Holy. Verses 1, 2, and 4, please. Take time to be holy, speak off with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to see. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like Him that shall be. Thy friends in thy conduct, His likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon shalt be fitted for service above. Amen. Take a moment. Greet your neighbor in the name of the Lord this morning. As you make your way back to your seats, as far as announcements go, um, we're off and running. Got through the first week of school. I think everybody survived, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I, I know I did. It was a it was a great first week, and so uh, we're off and running with that. Uh, we had a um, I guess what you call that a soft opening this morning, although it wasn't too soft, you had a pretty good crowd. Uh, Stomping Grounds Coffee and Tea opened up this morning and uh, had a good crowd in and out. And then they had their Sunday school, our uh, junior high, senior high class had uh, Sunday school down there. And then the a young adult group had Sunday school down there. And so it, it's a, if you haven't been down there yet to see all the work that's been done, you need to go uh, and take a look at all the things that have been happening. Do we know when we're going to be open next? Still working on that? This week sometime. All right. Look, be, look, be checking social media. They'll let you know when the coffee house is going to be open. But we're excited about that for them. Any other announcements? Anything going on in the community we need to know about today? Okay, so thank you to all of those who helped uh, make the Throckmorton Rising fundraiser happen. If you made desserts, or and somebody made a Snickerdoodle dessert that several people want the rest. Of the <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, 
<laughs> the cookies? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you can see Becky. She, Becky made them, so you can see Becky if you want the snickerdoodle recipe. <laughs> so catch her after church, and I bet she'll send it to you. But uh, So thank all of y'all for that and uh, making that such a success. Uh, I know the folks that were affected by the flood will be very grateful to receive uh, those funds to help them recover. So, so thank you guys. Any other announcements we need to make this morning? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're trying to expand our invitation list for Harvest Festival and we're making it a Harvest Festival and reunion. So if you know people who have moved from here, uh, regardless of their age, maybe if you even know uh, uh, some of the former pastors who have served here, if you know where they live, their addresses, please get those to Betsy so that they can get invitations out to them and invite them to come and spend uh, Saturday, November 4th with us at Harvest Festival and Reunion. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, Roots meeting, 4.30 here at the church. Uh, anybody that's interested in helping out with Roots, please make sure you come uh, and uh, we'll hear all about it and get organized and ready to go with Roots. Anything else? All right, what joys can we lift up this morning? What are we happy about? We got some rain, but not too much rain. Uh, we, got, <laughs> we, got a, we got a good little rain here. I, was, I, I brought that up as a joy out at Elbert, and they were like, what rain? They didn't get any rain out at Elbert. <laughs> so we were blessed to get a, you know, we had two inches at the house here, and I know some folks west of here had a little more than that. So uh, what a blessing to get this time of year is a good rain like that. So we'll take that as a joy. What else? Yeah, the cooler weather that went with it, well, we'll take that for sure. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my granddaughter, Shannon, who is the younger of the two that I used to raise, she landed an internship at the nuclear plant in Glen uh, Rose while she's going to school. She wants to be a solar engineer. Okay, great. She's going to pay for like $35,000 to $40,000 plus my network of her tuition. Wow, that's a heck of an internship. Yeah. So praise the Lord for Shannon getting that internship in the field that she's wanting to go into. That's going to be neat for her uh, to be a part of that. Looks good on those resumes, doesn't it? Yes. You bet. What else? Anything? Any other joys to lift up this morning? Uh, I came up here Friday after the rain, or as the rain was still going on, and I saw no water. There was no puddling on the window sills. There was no dripping on the stairwells in the back. The guy, the roofing from the roofing company was here on Thursday. And he had, I don't know how many tubes of caulk he went through, but he went all the way back down this whole side across the front of the church and he filled in. You can see it if you go out this morning when you leave church, look up on the roof there. You can see the white caulk that he put up uh, to fill in all the cracks that were in these bricks and everything. And so we're crossing our fingers thinking, hey, maybe we finally uh, stemmed the water that's coming in the building. And if so, we'll give it one more rain to make sure. Uh, and then we'll see about maybe repairing some of this plaster work uh, here in the building because there's no use in doing that until we get the water problem fixed. Yes, Joanne? There was, it was dry. It was dry in the storeroom. I know. <laughs> I know. I had the same look on my face when I looked down there. It was dry. You bet. It's always a joy to have them with us. Other joys this morning. None of the kids want to lift up school starting as a joy? Come on. Really? Golly, I thought... I thought at least Savannah would since it's her senior year in high school, but no. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Well, maybe that's just they're hiding that in their heart because they, you know, they, they really are happy. But we know the truth. All right. Let's take a look at our list of prayer concerns this morning. Um, I do want to give you an update on Mac Pirtle. Uh, his son had to put him in the hospital up here in Throckmorton uh, the other night. Uh, he has been diagnosed now with pneumonia. And so they are stopping his chemo treatments uh, until he can get that uh, taken care of. 
Uh, Dr. Beasley told him he'd probably be in the hospital up here for about a week. Uh, he's very limited on the number of visitors that he can have because the chemo has um, compromised his immune system. And so Betsy has put a poster board back here at the back of the sanctuary uh, with a little, you know, little note to Mac. And we're inviting everyone as you leave this morning, if you could take a moment just to sign and write him a little note. And then we'll deliver that up to the hospital uh, this week and, and maybe give him uh, some joy uh, to see that his church family is uh, caring about him and praying for him. So uh, we definitely need to keep Mac in our prayers and, and Andrew as well. Uh, as he tries to care for Mac, and so that's an update there. Uh, are there any other updates or additions to our prayer list this morning? Who is this? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I also heard that Brenda Stam is home uh, from rehab in Wichita Falls. Uh, following her stroke, she's doing the rehab here in Throckmorton now. Uh, she's making lots of strides. It's a little frustrating, you know, because it's a slow recovery. Uh, but they are hoping that she can have a, a good recovery from, from that stroke. Are there any other updates or additions to our prayer list this morning? I have friends on Houston. Oh, goodness. Okay. Joey? Okay, Joey Gober. We obviously need to be praying for all of those folks uh, who are being affected by the, the flooding uh, from this hurricane, a kind of an unprecedented uh, event going on down there as far as weather goes. And so uh, be praying for those that are stuck in that and that uh, they, can, they can ride out the storm and, and all be okay. Are there any others this morning? Ma'am? Well, that might be kind of iffy. Yeah, the, the keys were going on a cruise and leaving out of New Orleans. So uh, hopefully that worked out. <laughs> All right. Any other prayer concerns this morning? All right, let's prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. God, we come to you this morning and we're just uh, so grateful and thankful that we can come into your house on this beautiful morning and just sing praises to you and fellowship with one another and, and hear your word. And we pray, Lord, that we would just be able to set aside all the worries and the cares of yesterday and tomorrow and just focus for these short moments on what you might have to say to us today. We pray that your word would penetrate our hearts, that it would... Um, empower us, that it would uh, challenge us, that it would give us uh, direction as we leave this place and seek to be your disciples in the world around us. Lord, we thank you for all the joys and the blessings that you give us in our lives. Those that have been named this morning and those that we hold dear in our hearts, Lord, help us never to take the blessings that we have for granted. But there are those this morning who do need to feel your touch in a healing way, in a comforting way. So we lift up these on our prayer list this morning, especially we lift up Mac and Andrew as, as Mac is in the hospital. We pray that, the, that he would heal him of the pneumonia quickly so that he can regain some strength and continue the treatments that he needs to take. We pray for Andrew that you would give him strength uh, as it's very stressful time in his life, Lord, as he, t as he seeks to take care of his dad. Lord, we pray for those who are in the path of this storm down along the coast. Uh, we can't even fathom or imagine um, 
the devastation and the, the destruction that is going on there as these rains continue to fall and the flooding gets worse in some of these places. And we pray for the first responders. We pray for those who are going in and trying to rescue folks. We just pray that you would keep people safe, that you would watch over them, that you would give our authorities wisdom and discernment and how best to uh, deal with the, the things that are going on down there. And that you would open doors and, and help us to find ways in which we can also be of service to our friends and neighbors down along the coast. We pray especially for those of us who have loved ones and family members uh, who may be in the path of this storm. That you would keep the lines of communication open. That you would just help us uh, to know that they are safe. Well, we lift up this community to you. As we've started school, as we get involved into the school year, we, we continue to lift up our, our teachers and our students and our administrators. We pray for those this morning who are waking up not knowing what it means to know you. And we pray that through our lives and our actions we would be a light in the darkness for them. Father God, we continue to lift up this nation to you. There's so much discord, there's so much hatred. If we watch the news for any length of time, it's very disheartening and heartbreaking to see. Lord, we pray that, the only, and we know, Lord, that only the true, truest of all peace can come through you. And so we pray for peace. We pray that your church would rise up as an instrument of your peace in these troubled areas and help to calm things down. And Lord, we pray for our world where we see that there's discord here. There's even more turmoil in other places in the world this morning and people are suffering because of it. And we pray that you would bring peace to those war-torn areas and that you would deliver those of our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted for their faith each and every day. And God, when we come to those times when we don't know what to say or even how to pray, help us remember we can always pray with confidence the prayer you taught your disciples when you prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and turn to number 397 and sing, I Need Thee Every Hour. Verses 1, 2, and 5, please. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee, I need Thee every hour, stay Thou nearby, temptations lose their power when Thou art nigh. I need Thee, oh I need Thee. You may be seated and let the little children come and we'll have our children's message this morning.
down there by the boys if you want to. Down there you go. Now you can just sit right. Can you sit right there? Can you get in, everybody? All right. That's fine. That's good. Well, how was school? Good. Good. But you went too. You went too. Who keeps you? Hmm. What's me. Me. You keep yourself? Oh, that, that, that. No. Me does. Me. 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 Okay. I bet y'all have fun, don't you? How was school? I didn't get school. You didn't get school. You didn't You went to school. Did you like it? Okay. All right. Did you love it? That's a different word. That's a different word, love, love. Did your teacher put you by somebody? Mm, I don't want to sit by them. Did your teacher put you by somebody you didn't want to sit by? Uh, she, she sent me by Claire because I wanted to. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's, you're lucky, aren't you? Lucky in love, all right. You remember when I, I, uh, well, I'll do it in a minute. Brother Jay's Bible verse comes from John today. John talks about love. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Who is talking here? You know who's talking? Jesus? God? He said, you, you love me, then you will keep my commandments. What does commandments mean? What he tells you to do. What he tells you to do? Okay. So, if your teacher tells you to do something, tells you to sit by somebody, or tells you to walk down very quietly down the hall, you'll do that, won't you? You remember when we did this one time? That's not the middle. You can take your Bible, and you can do it like this, and what do you have? A heart. A heart. That's what this whole book is about. Anybody, any Bible that you have, it doesn't matter if it's this one or it doesn't matter if it's that great big huge one up there. That's, that is the number one thing he wants you to do is love other people. No matter what color they are, no matter if they don't have on good clothes, if they don't have any money, he commands you to love them too. Okay? Let's say a prayer. Can you hold hands? You want to hold hands with her? Hold hands with your little sister. You and Lydia. Here you. Yeah. Hold hands with Briley. Briley and Brighton. Tell me your name. Brighton. Brighton. Okay. Brighton. I did good, Mom. Brighton and Briley. Okay. Lydia, you hold hands with with Brighton. Stick your hand up there and hold hands. There you go. Okay. All right, everybody got some ice cream? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we hope that this week that you will allow us to show love to someone. Could be someone in our class. Could be someone that we're walking down the street with. Could be someone on the playground. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As the children are going back to their seats or to the nursery, if we could have some ushers gather in the back, we'll take our morning offering. Um. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning and we pray that you would bless this time that we can give back to you. May we give with cheerful hearts. May these funds be multiplied and used for your glory here in Throckmorton and around the world. Amen.
Please rise to the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. If I yawn during my sermon, it is not because I'm boring myself. It is also not because my first week of teaching school was overly stressful. It's Ginger's fault. Ginger is our dog who had puppies. I've never had a dog that had puppies before. It's like having a baby in the house. About every three or four hours, the dog wants to go out, then the dog wants to come back in, then the dog wants to go back out again. It's just like, you know, it's your turn, honey. You know, it's just, you end up taking care of this crazy dog. And so, if I yawn, that's why. I just wanted to get that out of the way before we start. We're going to be sharing a scripture with you this morning that all of you have heard at some point in time, if you've grown up in the church any at all. And it's one of those really profound uh, scriptures and we all want to think yeah man yes you know I, I love I could love somebody enough to do this for them but is there more to it than that and I found as I've studied it and, and, and I've heard a, I had a devotional this week that really kind of opened my eyes to a whole nother way of looking at this verse and so I, I hope it'll be a new way for you as well our text this morning comes from John chapter 15 Verses 12 through 13. Hear the words of Jesus this morning. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we've all, yeah, thanks be to God. We've all heard that verse. You know, greater love has no one than this to lay your life down for your friends. And growing up, I was taught that I needed to, to consider this verse in two ways. Uh, one way was I needed to read this verse and I needed to reflect on the cross. I needed to think about how Jesus died for me and he died for my sins. And because of that, I could call him friend. And, that, and that's not wrong. That is a very true way of looking at this verse. And then I was also taught that, that I needed, as a Christian, I needed to be willing to lay my life down for my friends, if it ever came to it, to, to physically give my life so that they might live. You know, kind of like you see in the movies where the, the soldiers are in the foxhole and the grenade comes flying in and the soldier dives on the grenade and absorbs the you know, shock and sacrifices their life so that their buddies can live. The thing is, I mean, as, as high up there as you can, you can think that is, and no matter how much I love my friends, you know, I'm just being honest with you, I had a hard time thinking that I could just give my life for, for my friends. Now, I might give my life for my brother or for my mom or for my dad, but, you know, if we're being honest, it, there's that list of people that you would literally be willing to die for is probably not a very long list, if we're honest, isn't it? And so we kind of take this verse and we're, we're, we just kind of tack it up in the back of our minds, kind of, you know, kind of like that fire extinguisher we have in our house. You know, it's there just in case of emergencies. And if the time ever arose and if it's that one of those people that's on that short list, yeah, I'll die for them. And we don't see an everyday application for this verse to lay your life down for your friends. But I want you to look at this verse in a different way today. I want you to think about the relationships you have with other people, all the way from your immediate family, all the way down to just those people you just kind of know as an acquaintance. And I want you to think of them along a continuum. You know, just this line. And on this side of the continuum, uh, there's a passage of Scripture that will kind of fit this, this anchor point on the continuum, and it's Romans 12, 18. 
In Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Okay, and so you have this little anchor point on the continuum and you have these people within here that you, you can live in peace with and you know that there's still some people over here that's kind of hard to live at peace with. But, you know, look at the verse. It says, if it is possible, okay, so we know it's not always possible. As far as it depends on you and we know that it doesn't always depend on us, just do your best to live at peace with one another. That's kind of the low end of the continuum here. And then imagine these relationships stretching all the way across and you have this other anchor point over here on the continuum and that's our verse for the day. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You have those relationships with these people that are so intimate, so tight that you wouldn't even think twice about giving your life for them if it came right down to it. But you have this you have this continuum in between, okay? There's all of these relationships fitting in, and that's a huge range. And we need to be thinking about how, you know, how we're moving people from this side over into this side where we can live at peace with them and then maybe moving them along the continuum, getting more and more people closer to the point that we might even be willing to die for them. And so instead of hanging this verse back, you know, in the back of our spiritual closet, just in case of emergency, we can begin to work through our life and work through those relationships. It all comes down to how we look at what love is and how we are to love others. That's why I read verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I challenge you sometimes to go through the Gospels. And with a pen or a pencil, write down at the top of each page, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, write down at the, at the top of each page, as I have loved you. It's kind of an interpretive lens as you read through the Gospels. Because, you know, it, you know, love each other as I have loved you is not some abstract thing. It's not some abstract idea. We have the Gospels of Jesus Christ that literally show us how Christ has loved us. I mean, this is how Jesus did it, page after page after page, story after story after story. The Gospels are how we understand how He loves us and what His love looks like. It's the real depiction of why God became a person, to show us how He loves us, and to show us how he wants us to love one another in even in, in an even more powerful sense. In an even more powerful sense, it, the Gospels show us how God wants to love other people through us. Did you realize that? That God wants to love other people through you? That's an amazing concept. And so greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You know, Jesus, you know, he, he told his disciples that they were his friends. He said, I call you friends. I no longer call you servants. And so what if we went back and looked through the Gospels to see how Jesus loved his disciples as friends? He demonstrated his love for them as friends in a very interesting way. Right before he tells them this, you know, I'm, I'm calling you my friends, you're no longer servants. In John chapter 13, he does something very profound for them. He literally puts himself in the place of a servant. At the very feet of his disciples. And he washes their feet. And so if you see that in your mind, that picture... Let's say Peter, John, or Andrew sitting there with Jesus kneeling down in front of them, washing their feet. That's a picture of what it means to lay your life down for your friends. 
It's not necessarily being willing to die physically for them. It can go that far, but it's just being willing to serve them. It's being willing to set aside your own agenda. It's being willing to set aside your priorities. And for a time, if you see a friend in need, you are willing to give up yourself and serve them. Lay your life down for your friends. It can happen every day. It can happen every day. And Jesus tells them, at, after he finishes doing this for them, he asks them a question. He says, do you understand what I've done for you? Do you get it? Do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. But now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Greater love has no one than this. That they should lay them, their lives down for their friends. You know, we kind of have an idea when we hear the word martyr. When we hear that word, we think of those folks over the course of history who have, you know, heroically died for the faith. You know, there's people today in the world being killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. And, and that's what we think of as a martyr. But did you know that's not its, that's not its literal definition? The word martyr in the New Testament is the Greek word maturos. And maturos literally means witness. That's what it means. It means witness a person who is so filled with the spirit of god and the love of god that they're willing to serve their fellow man and yes sometimes it gets to the point where they they might actually die but in everyday life they're just willing to be a witness they're just willing to serve each and every day that's why the saints over the years have all in one accord uh, said this one, this one phrase. That the secret to life is to die before you die. The secret to life is to die before you die. What in the heck does that mean? Well, Jesus puts it this way. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. When Jesus calls a person, he bids them to come and die. Die to self and become a martyr, a witness. He calls us to die to self and become a martyr, a witness. And what happens? You guys have experienced this at times in your life. What happens when we truly lay ourselves down? We lay ourselves down and we serve other people. Gosh, we feel alive. More alive than we, than we ever thought we could you know, feel alive when we were off chasing after our own ambitions. And what the world tells us is important. No, we feel life when we give of ourselves to others. And we find ourselves kind of wanting to give more and give more and give more. And the more we give, the more we realize that there's more to give. That God keeps filling us up. That the Holy Spirit just keeps pouring into us. You've heard the phrase, my cup runneth over. That cup just keeps running over and we just give and give and give. And then it becomes... Not just something we do every once in a while. It starts to become something we do every day. It starts to become something we live for. It's to give and give and give. Guys, that's the world of the kingdom of God. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their lives for their friends. These relationships on this continuum in your life from the ones that are just an acquaintance that you can just barely live in peace with giving your life for them all the way up to the people that you might be willing to physically die for 
giving your life for them. That's the world of the kingdom of God. That's the world of the love of God. Folks, that's the place where miracles happen. That's the place where miracles happen. That should be our objective is to go there. As Paul said, we talked about it last week, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. So what about us? What about me? What about you? Hopefully this morning, if nothing else, you've seen that, that you can take this verse down from the shelf of your, of your mind and you can start to apply it to your life every day. That you can be a martyr and still physically live. You can be a witness each and every day of your life. And you can think about those relationships you have. And where they fall on this continuum of, of, of relationship. And you can start working on moving those people along that continuum. And finding ways to lay down your life for them each and every day. So I pray for sure that's, that's, an, that's something you can take away from this morning. But I'm wondering if there might be some this morning who are realizing for the first time that <laughs> you really haven't died to yourself at all. And you've been playing the game pretty good. But if you're brutally honest, you have to admit that you've been working really hard to save your life. To make life what you want it to be. And to live life on your terms. And maybe it's just now dawning on you. That if I continue to do this. It's all going to be for nothing. Because without Christ. Our lives are nothing. True life. Meaningful life purposeful life can only be had by dying to self and living for Christ. So as we close this morning, I, I would pray that you would ask God to show you where you are in this area. You know, for those, you know, a lot of folks, we, we, we've given a lot of things to God. We've died to most of ourselves, but you know, there might still be that one little part we're hanging on to. No, oh God, just let me have this one little part. Let me stay in control of this one little part. That's not the way it works. God wants it all. It's all or nothing with Him. There's no fence riding with Him. You're either all in or you're all out with God. And so I pray that God, you would ask God to show you if there's any of those areas in your life and that you might be willing this morning to take that deep breath and say, oh God, okay God, you can have it. It's yours. And then I'd also ask you to ask God to show you ways to move your relationships along that continuum toward being people, to being in relationship with people. To the point that you would be willing to lay your life down for them. And as we sing, as we hear our closing hymn and sing it this morning, if you need prayer, this altar's open. If you need me to pray with you, come down to the front. Don't, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. This is between you and, and God. And I'd be more than willing to pray with you as we sing our closing hymn this morning. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning and I just thank you for this, this new way of looking at this verse. This verse that we've held in such high esteem in our Christian walk. But one that we didn't think we would ever really have to use. Lord, now you show us through your grace and your mercy that this is something we need to be doing every single day. Laying our lives down in service to others. Search our hearts, Lord. We can't do this if we're still hanging on to parts of ourself. We can't live like you're calling us to live if we haven't died to ourselves. And so if that be us this morning, I pray that you would just give us the strength to, to finally let it go. 
And Lord, also just show us those relationships. Put those faces and those names in our hearts and minds and help us each and every day to look for ways in which we can, as Jesus did by example, serve them. And in doing so, we are laying our lives down as a witness, as a martyr for them. And demonstrating what it truly means to be the children of God. Amen.
receive this benediction. May the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and to the honor and glory of God the Father, bless you and keep you and renew you so that you can go from this place fully His and lay your life down for your friends. Amen. Turn your